Great. Well, thank you so much and welcome to our live stream class today. I'm Marta Rañón and I'm going to be talking about a topic that we've actually had a lot of requests for and that is uh, bath time and everything that comes with bath, <laughs> right? Um, so the idea is to talk about some of those challenges. I want to make this interactive, so feel free to, you know, shout out uh, your perspective, your experience, your questions. We will also address questions from our online participants and uh, hopefully help you uh, kind of navigate the challenges of having to care for someone, especially as it relates to bath time. So let me ask you really quick, how many of you are caregivers, just to get an idea? Okay, a lot of you. And I know that sometimes being a caregiver, you kind of step in, you do the job, or you kind of doing it and learning as you go, not because you took an extensive uh, course and degree on caregiving, right? But we, we are here because we love that person and we care for that person and we want to do the best. And so um, I know that sometimes it's a lot of uh, work and it's understandable and it's people that you are caring for that you are used to maybe seeing themselves take showers or their of their own or be very independent and now they're 100 percent or some sort of degree dependent on you so i know that's also very emotionally difficult for a lot of us who have been and who are caregivers so i'm here to tell you that um, we are here for you we are a nonprofit organization that focuses 100% on you, the caregivers. So if you are not a caregiver, but you know someone who is a caregiver, uh, maybe a family member, a friend, a colleague, feel free to share this information because it could be valuable to them as well, okay? And I will talk about our resources later so that before you leave, you get connected to them um, and, and help you that way, all right? So are we ready? Everybody have their little notepads and pens and everything? Okay, good. So this is my goal today, and I'm hoping to do that within an hour. Um, so let, let's see how much we're able to do. So identify some of the challenges of bathing, and that can be bathing someone who's elderly or bathing someone who has dementia, which can be uh, different. Um, we also want to explore some bathing techniques. Uh, I know talking to caregivers, sometimes they tell me, okay, so what do I do now? Uh, help me uh, figure this out and then how to make the bathing experience safer because ultimately you know we take a shower we go take a shower we don't think about safety as much but now when you're caring for someone who maybe has some balance or mobility issues then we need to think about their safety sound good okay so what are some of the challenges of bathing or bath time I just want to take a shower. Any anybody familiar with this one? So it's it's common for you to have experienced this. What it, what else? What a, another challenge? Safety. Safety for them for yourself. Okay. What else? How about time constraints? Right. Do you have four hours? <laughs> Most of us don't, right? So then you got to think about the additional time that it's going to take for you to help that person take a bath, for example. What else? How to do that, right? Because again, going back to how many of us are formally trained in bathing somebody, right? So what do you do? What are some of the equipment that's available to us to help us bathing or caring for that person in the bathroom? So we're going to talk about that. And let's go with your first challenge uh, that you identified as the person not wanting to take a shower. What has been your experience? Um, he just bluntly refuses for weeks. For weeks. To take a shower. Yeah. And then often when, they, when he does take a shower, He'll start cussing uh, before it's over, you know, but he, he, that's enough. That, that, you know, the water hurts. Mm. So now you have to deal with that as well. Yeah. Okay. Anybody have experienced something similar? Yeah? Every day. Every day. I have found um, something that uh, Milo and, Milo and Angela said is people are not going to remember what you say. People are not going to remember what you do, but they're going to remember how you made them feel. 
So what I've tried to do is make sure that my approach to him is calm, it's close, and it's gentle. And it's, I'm not saying it's gonna work all the time, because it doesn't sometimes, but it has changed his attitude. I still have resistance, but not as much. I'm so glad you said that because it is true. A lot of what we do as caregivers, it is changing our approach to the challenge. The challenge might still be there. The person might still not want to take a shower, uh, but then how do we make them feel more comfortable and ease into that activity so that it causes less resistance or at least not so much negativity like cussing or you know, sometimes even getting physical uh, as a response. So we're going to talk about all that. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing. So first and foremost, what you were saying, safety, safety, safety. Again, puts it into perspective, right? Because when we go to the bathroom, we don't think about safety. We just do what we need to do and we get out. So when we're taking care of someone, things to remember and to look at um, is the physical environment, okay? I want you to think of the bathrooms where you live or where you care for that person. If it's their house or if it's your house that they, and they live with you, what does that bathroom that they use look like? Can you picture it? Are there any loose rugs on the floor? Okay, so I want you to start thinking about taking inventory of your bathroom. And if you see that, oh yes, I do have a rug, there is a towel that I put on the bottom so that they step out of the bathtub, for example, you need to write that down because that can be a safety concern. Okay. Grab bars. Anybody have grab bars? Good. Good. Most of you. Those are wonderful. And they're easy to install and they're easy to buy. We also have, um, for our clients that we, we help, we also have a way to connect you with different services that can install them for free. So you just need to let us know and we can do that for you. Okay. Water temperature. How, how much... How many of you like to take hot showers? <laughs> right? It's my relax, it's my sauna time, right? Um, so we like water temperature, but you mentioned something. You talked about the person saying the water's too cold, uh, hot. Too cold. Too cold. Too cold, always too cold. And so Even if, when, if they run the water and let him just stick his hand in there, after, it's just too cold. So what do you do there? So that when the water is too cold, and I'm just repeating it for our friends online, it's the water temperature, right? It's too cold or it might be too hot. So something to consider is think about, it's really putting yourselves in their shoes, right? Looking at it from their perspective. We might get into hot water and it feels really nice. But to a person that maybe has really thin skin, uh, maybe they have issues of dementia, Maybe there's some other condition that they are dealing with where it makes it uncomfortable. Sticking your hand in the water is different than putting your shoulders in the water. It's, it's like it's different kind of sensory uh, receptors that we have here versus the hand. We can tolerate more than maybe here or here or even your face. So it's something to think about that maybe easing into the, the shower versus, you know, running in there. But thinking about water temperature as a as something to consider. I love taking a bath with bubbles, but maybe that's probably not the best when you're caring for somebody because it just makes everything really slippery. Or their sensibilities to a certain scent might be a problem. Or even, again, person maybe with advanced stages of Alzheimer's or dementia, what is this foamy thing, right? Or if you see it in the, in the drain, it's coming from the bottom, that's scary what's happening. So really thinking about that. Um, have you heard, bench, have you heard um, of benches and seats that you can put? Okay. Um, you can do that to help you and we're going to really explore those options. And really just take inventory of your bathrooms. Everybody's bathrooms are different. What are some of the trouble spots? Do you have a lot of knickknacks? You know, do you have a lot of hanging things? Do you have a lot of decor that is really unnecessary? I mean, I know it makes your bathroom nice, but right now, really, that's not the priority. It's safety. Okay. Okay. So things to consider. Again, keeping uh, the bathroom into in in the forefront of our mind. Shower curtains. How many of you have shower curtains? 
Okay. So, yay or nay? You say nay? Who knows? Never thought about it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know any facilities in there. There are no shower curtains. Yeah. They, they use the hand line. Yes. And part of the problem with shower curtains is it gives us a false sense of security. If you think about it, think about if you have a shower curtain and you get in the shower and you're about to slip, what is your automatic reaction? Hold on to something, right? So you're going to hold on to the shower. How sturdy is it? Shower curtain, how sturdy is it? It's not. It's just decor, kind of, right? It's not even holding anything, really. Um, so that's going to come down with you. And that might trample you, and now you're going to kind of not even be able to unwind yourself from the shower curtain, and it just becomes this, like, you know, unstoppable accident. That's why grab bars would be a better option. How many of you have shower doors? Okay. Yay or nay? Yay. Yay? Who knows? <laughs> Depends. Because if you think about it, and like you were saying, for sometimes facilities don't even have anything. Because, again, the shower door is another false sense of security. How sturdy is it if I hold on to that little rod that is in, in the shower door? It's really more for decor, so you can just pull it, you know, one way or another. So maybe taking off the doors altogether to give you a better uh, uh, kind of degree of mobility when you're helping that person in and out. Something to consider, okay? Okay, toilet seat. Some toilet seats are really high, others are really low, others have a lot of gadgets, others are right in a corner where you kind of have to maneuver into that space. You know, if somebody that you're caring for has a cane or a walker, how easy is it to get in and out of the toilet? So think about that. Yes? Okay. Oh. Okay. So you just went to your local like drugstore and bought those handrails that you can put in a toilet. I'm just repeating it, but that's great. That's great because that's easy, right? You can easily and it comes off. It's not permanent. Great. Have you thought about locks? So all of our bathrooms have locks, right? Privacy. But sometimes having a lock in a bathroom for, you know, if we're caring for somebody is probably not the best idea. And I've even heard of caregivers who have taken the door off altogether. Because really, at that point, right, privacy is the least of your concerns, is safety. So by having a lock in your bathroom, what happens if the person locks the door, you're outside, they're inside, they fall? How easy are you gonna, easily are you going to get in to help them? Right? If they can't even get themselves off, how are you going to unlock the door for you? So maybe the types of locks that we can think about are locks that, you know, lock and unlock from both sides, or the closet, you know, just handles, where really they don't have a lock, it's just a door. And if you're caring for that person, that person lives with you, maybe informing the rest of the family, hey, when this door is closed, so-and-so is in there, just try to give them privacy. We're not going to lock it in case we have to run in there. Does that make sense? Floor. What do your floors look like? Tile. Tile. Rugs. Some. Some. Okay. Anything else on the floor? Like a plant in a corner or a chair or a table. Sometimes people do that. Or maybe a little storage. Like, really think about, bathrooms are not that big. I mean, unless you have, like, this massive, <laughs> you know, walk-in, um, you know, room of a bathroom, they're pretty tiny. So what is on the floor that can be a problem? That if you hold on to it, it can come off or it can come and fall, okay? And then we talked about the clutter. And I say clutter, and I know to some people it might be clutter, to others it might be decor, but if this is not serving any purpose, and it's there, and it's, it's something that could potentially fall and maybe hurt somebody, do I really need it there? We'll just do without decor. <laughs> okay, 
So I wanted to share this with you because, um, you know, sometimes we don't think about really using a lot of light in the shower. You know, it's not like we're reading necessarily or watching television in there, hopefully not. But um, this, the bathroom is one of those places where a lot of falls happen for obvious reasons, right? There's water. Uh, it's cold. But um, lighting. An 85-year-old needs about three times as much lighting. I don't know about you, but I'm always turning on lights. My husband keeps turning them off because I feel I, I, I want to see. I want to prevent accidents. Especially when I'm washing dishes, right? I don't want to cut myself because I didn't, I didn't see if that was a fork or, or a spoon or a knife. So we need to consider also contrasting colors. And we're going to talk about that uh, in the bathroom, okay? So here's a light switch. What do your light switches look like? Or what does your lighting look like in the bathroom? Yes? They look like that? Okay. So it's simple, right? It just toggles up and down, not, not too complicated. Um, anybody have um, sensor, motion sensor lighting in the bathroom? What happens when the person that you're caring for wakes up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom? How do they deal with it? Turns the lights on? Is that still okay? It's not a problem? Because something you might consider is putting on a motion sensor light. So that's one less thing they have to worry about and fumble with. As soon as you get in the bathroom, the lights turn on. And maybe letting them know, hey, I'm just going to install this to make it easier for you. At night, because it takes a while for our eyes to adjust to the dark and the light, right? If they're getting up from the bathroom or the bedroom and they're walking to the bathroom, maybe along the way some sort of uh, night lights that you can put that delineates where the bathroom is. Maybe putting a night light in the bathroom. Uh, near the toilet or the sink could help. Um, and then, of course, as you're showering, as you're in there, lights that are going to be easier for you to see because what color is our bathroom? White on white on white. <laughs> white on white on white with some white decor, right? Usually that's the case. And if there's, if a person needs lighting, we just talked about, right? They need more lighting. But a person might have dementia or they really have mobility issues, so they really can't decipher um, kind of the depth perception is off. So if I see white and there's a white toilet and it all blends in, and what if I think the toilet's here but it's really over there and so I'm sitting here, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to fall. So maybe what would be easier is to change the toilet seat cover, right? The, you can change the seats. Uh, maybe you want to, I mean, if, you have, if you're in the process of remodeling, you want to put different tile, color tile, then great. I would not suggest putting rugs around the toilet, because even though they're different colors, but that's just a rug, um, unless you can secure it somehow. But really think about everything being white. And I know they sell these um, decals, right? Like flowers and that you, the what? The light, the light Some are, um, they glow in the dark. Others are just different colors like flowers or dolphins or, you know, bubbles or something that you could put. They're stickers you could put on the toilet seat. Um, yes? They have like a neon toilet seat. Mm -hmm. Neon toilet seat. How cool is that? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's bed, bath, and beyond. Okay. Thanks for that tip because uh, that could also help, right? At night, especially. I've actually seen some that have lights. Yeah, inside the water. You inside the water. <laughs> so it's like you're you're there, right? Okay. So really think about what it looks like so that it's not all one monochromatic color that could be difficult for an elderly person. Does that, your handrails look something like this? But they're more white. They're more white. <laughs> they have the gray, like, right here, right? Yeah, it kind of feels like felt or something. Yes, it's kind of like rubbery. Yeah, it's not smooth. Yes, so you can grab it. 
So this is an example of a temporary solution. And as you can see, it's a raised toilet seat. So the person doesn't have to go as, as you know, lower as much as uh, if they're not able to. They can easily get in and out because they can hold on to the, the rails. Um, you know, you, you can still put stickers or you can still put a different toilet seat. That might help. Um, but it's something that is easily fixed. The other thing I might suggest, you see where the toilet roll, a paper roll uh, is? If it's too difficult, sometimes if you think about it, some bathrooms are really, you know, they're in the back or they're really far away. They have um, uh, these kind of toilet uh, roll dispensers that you can put, it's almost like a tower, and it's, uh, you can move it, you can put it anywhere. So you might be able to do that and put it somewhere else where it's easier for that person to, to find and to get to. And I think you can also buy them at uh, stores um, easily. Okay, we're getting in the shower now. <laughs> do you have those uh, nifty, have you seen those showers where you just walk in and then you sit and it's like these closed doors, like a walk-in shower? A lot of people do that, but they're very pricey. So a lot of us don't have those type of showers. But in the shower, how many of you have, um, you talked about like a shower, handheld shower head. Have, do you have that? If you don't, you should consider that. Um, when I was a caregiver, we changed the shower head to a handheld one, and it made such a difference. Because then the person could sit in one of those benches, and you could easily shower that person without having to struggle with trying to reach, especially over that person, and then getting wet. Um, it also allows for the person to do it themselves. And it's easily uh, maneuvered. You know, you can use it for any, any area. Uh, it's also a way to kind of control. Uh, you could easily make it harder or softer if that person's having, um, you know, not liking the pressure. So really think about changing the shower if you don't have one already. Okay, so here's an example of a bathroom with all those different um, adaptations that we kind of mentioned, right? So here's a bench that could go over the, the, the bathtub. Notice there's no shower curtain, no shower doors. They even have this, this is something that you can easily clamp onto the side and it's just to help you kind of come in and out of the shower or the tub. Uh, it could also help you as a caregiver if you're trying to uh, help that person. Same thing, this is a different model but it's the same idea, it's over the toilet seat, it's just to raise it. Um, I personally would get rid of, this is not necessary, even that. I, I know it might be fake but it's just, I, I wouldn't want to think that I can hold on to it and then have it fall on me. Uh, maybe same thing with that. But this would be an example, right? It's not too costly. You can buy it at a local pharmacy, and I know sometimes uh, insurance might pay for some of these uh, items. Um, what do you think? So the patient sits on the edge and then slides in and lifts their legs over, and they, and they can... Uh, yes. Yes, there's two types. There's types that they, it's, a, it's a bench, and that's the idea, that you sit on the outside and you kind of slide putting your feet over. The other one is just like a chair that fits inside. So it's up to you how high or how difficult it is for that person to get in and out. Yes? That's really great if you're a, a fall risk. Type person. Yeah. You can sit down and just swing your legs into the tub. Yeah, and so a caregiver could easily help that person. And if you have, you can't really see it, but if you have a handheld shower head, that might make it easier to, to wash the person. Okay? And those ribs are, are really secure? Yes, one of the, uh, there's different kinds. When I was uh, caring for my great aunt and looking back at what you were saying, the, the combativeness, um, I used to have a, a big challenge trying to bathe her. She would get really upset. She would start cussing. She would say, why don't you shower, you know? What you, if you want me to shower, maybe you should shower. And so there was this constant struggle. Um, 
once I got her the shower, she loved me and thanked me for profusely because it felt so good and she was so happy afterwards. But it took an hour, you know, and, and who has two hours, right, to do shower time. Um, I found that having the shower, like the bench, the handheld, these, and of course that, made it so much easier for me. Because then I could allow her that independence, right, even though it was still there, but allow her that independence of bathing herself, and it wasn't too big of a risk, because I was right there. And I could easily get to her. Now, something to consider, and right now we're just talking about the physical things. Um, the grab bars, I know that this is like tile. There are some that you can screw onto tiles. There are some that you, they have like a suction uh, kind of grip. Uh, if you don't have tile, but you have this kind of thing like this one does, maybe um, a longer one that could help the person stand up, um, you can find different things. This is another option. That's technically a, like a grab bar. It's just you don't have to screw it onto anything. Okay, so we're going to play a little game here. I want you to tell me what are the trouble spots. The rug, that's the easy one, right? Okay. What else? The light switch. Light switch? Because it's, if the door is here, which probably is, I have to walk all the way over there to turn it on? <laughs> that's kind of ridiculous, right? <clears throat> so now if I'm a person that has mobility issues, how easy is it going to be to get in there? Right? Now, there are some things that you can do to make it better because, how, you know, unless you're going to remodel the whole bathroom, that's great if you can. But if not, here are some things. Grab bars. Easily remove the rug. And then getting a bench with a shower head. I would still remove the, the curtain. I would definitely remove the curtain. And if I don't want to use the, the light switch, notice how they put a night light. So that's how you kind of do these fixes without really having to spend a lot of money to remodel. Okay? All right. So what we were talking about, the struggles, right, the challenges, we really need to tell, you know, ask ourselves as caregivers, is it that necessary for the person to shower? And it just depends, right? I mean, it depends on your situation. Has it been weeks? Did they just shower yesterday? And most of us have no problem showering once, twice, three times a day. But, you know, it's, it's, we do it and we come out and no problem. We really need to talk about or ask ourselves that question. Is it necessary every day? Maybe the person can do a sponge bath. Maybe you can uh, have them shower every other day, every three days, you know. Um, and here's the daily sunshine. Time of the day can also, if you're noticing that they're always being um, kind of fighting you when you want to shower them, consider a different time of day. Maybe it's happening in the morning because you're waking them up to shower. It's like, I don't want to shower. So maybe you do it at night before you go to sleep. If that's the problem, then maybe you switch it. I mean, just trying different times, maybe in the middle of the day. Frail skin is something to consider. You know, we might be able to take three showers in a day, but maybe the person that you're caring for has such frail skin and you see that it's becoming really dry that maybe shower, you're showering too often. You know, and maybe uh, putting some moisturizer or maybe some way to clean, you know, wipes, you know, like baby wipes. Yes. It's, it helps prevent infections and bacteria buildup. So I would consider some of those. Um, you know, the, I know they come in like uh, either spray or wipes, some sort of wipes for the same idea. Yes. Okay. So you had already talked about kind of like creating that, changing that approach to bath time. So now we're going to get into, we talked about all the logistical challenges, right, of, of the bathroom. But now we're going to get into more of the, um, you know, just emotional 
uh, aspects of helping the person navigate the bathroom. So creating a peaceful environment, what do I mean by that? Throwing a bunch of like uh, curtain beads, you know, and peace signs and candles, what, what do you mean? What Spa do you think? music. Spa music? <laughs> Absolutely, music. Maybe something relaxing. You know, think of, a, of the spa. When you go to a spa, how, right away they make you feel comfortable, right? So maybe something like that sounds. Birds chirping, trickling water, you know, flutes playing. <laughs> Creating your own little o uh, oasis in your own spa at home. I, I spoke to a, I remember stories from caregivers, and I love hearing stories from caregivers because I remember one time uh, this individual was telling me that uh, she always had a challenge bathing her mom. And her mom had dementia. And so it was, Mom, you got to shower. No, you shower. I don't care. You know, <laughs> that whole problem, right? And, I, and she said, I started singing this song that she would always sing to us when we were little kids. And it was kind of the, the signal for them to like shower time, right? So she started doing that. And right away, the mom would start singing along. So it almost became the, that singing uh, together, like an activity that they would do together, but also a, uh, a way to remember, oh, it signals bath time. And that's how she would get her mom to bathe on a regular basis. So that's how she used that, that tool. So you might have something like that that works. Um, okay, so we talked about maintaining that independence and maybe through the handheld shower. It's really important to allow them to be a part of it, to scrub themselves. Maybe you can say, here's the, you know, the, the sponge or the poof, you know, or whatever it is that you're using, the scrub, and have them do it themselves. Um, I even put here an electric razor versus, you know, a, uh, you know, like a flat razor that you use that's not electric for shaving for men. You know, maybe that's, that allows them some independence without really worrying about cuts. Um, with my aunt, I remember that I, I integrated the experience by having her choose the type of uh, shower gel that she was going to use. So one was kind of flowery, the other one was more citrusy, and so, and they had little, you know, pictures on the outside, and I said, okay, which one do you want to use today? You know, we made it a big deal. And so she, oh, I'm going to go with the citrusy, and she would smell it kind of utilizing her senses, and then she would squeeze it onto the, you know, the poof, and then she would create the lather and then as she's doing that the scents are are really activated and and she's really feeling relaxed and so you could even tell that she was enjoying that time uh, versus a bar of soap that can be slippery uh, that doesn't really emit a lot of fragrance uh, but somehow having those you know what I'm talking about right those plastic you know the poofs uh, they really lather up um, you might consider doing that. Okay. How else can you maintain some independence in the shower? Let's say in the shower. So I know that, um, again, this the same caregiver, she would say, I don't want you to look at me. My aunt would also say that. I don't want you to look at me. And there's sometimes there's no point in saying, well, I need to be here to so make sure that you're not, you know, they don't fall and I'm here for your safety. But instead of saying that, maybe it's like, okay, don't worry about it. I'm going to turn around. You go ahead and, and do your thing. I'll be right here, but I'm just going to turn around. And then they would start engaging in conversation you know what, we need to buy this, next time we should get that, and then you start having a normal conversation, and by doing that, you kind of take away the focus from what's happening, which is bath time, okay? And that's why I talk about, you know, sometimes embarrassment might lead to that reluctance. I know with my aunt, um, she thought I was her, she still considered me her niece, she was my great aunt, and so she was, I was still her niece, and so she was really embarrassed that her niece was going to see her 
naked in the shower. That's not, you know, what should happen. So I, um, I had to kind of redirect those conversations and the focus. And I would say, you know, don't worry about it. I, I can't even see you anyway. You know, it's I'm over here. I have to wash, you know, whatever it is in the sink. And it was just my way to kind of give her that space. But I just couldn't leave her alone. She had dementia and I don't want her to fall. She was really frail. But um, having that, the clothes ready and the towel ready, like that picture that I showed you that had that towel rack right there, that's a good place to put it too if you think about it I mean you had no door so you can't really put it anywhere but if you put it there that's an easy way to say okay so here's your towel go ahead and cover yourself I'm gonna help you dry up and then as you get out then here are your clothes I'm not looking you know I'm covering you I'm I'm over here um, and then make them feel like they're still in control of that activity Asking for help can be many, many things. It could be, you know, hey, hand me the towel, hand me her clothes, I'm in the bathroom, have somebody else do that, or maybe help, having somebody help you, especially if the person is maybe wheelchair bound or, or, you know, really has a difficult time getting in the shower. But asking for help could also mean if <clears throat> Dad has an easier time bathing with, you know, Susie, and I'm just making up your name, but Susie over here because, you know, she's Dad's favorite, so she's always been Dad's favorite, so she's easier, um, you know, it, was, it would be easier for him to have her help him than me. So then that's a way to get him to bathe by saying, hey, Susie, can you help me? Um, I can you know, I'll be here, but you can get him interested in showering that way. So really eliciting the help from the people that are around you that can convince that person that it's shower time, if you have that opportunity. We can't forget about brushing teeth, <laughs> right? We're so focused on the shower, but what about brushing teeth? I mean, we talked about the toilet already, but brushing teeth, why is that important? Part of hygiene. Germs. In the mouth and germs so much of the rest of your body. Absolutely, internally and externally, and even eating. Now, sometimes care caregivers will tell me, "Well, but there really is no point. My my mom has dentures. I need to worry about tooth brushing. Why why do we still need to worry about that?" They get stained, they get dirty, they have bacteria, it can still be an issue, but it's also part of the routine, right? All of our lives we've been going to the restroom and bathing and brushing our teeth. It's still part of that independence, right? It's still part of that routine. And the, the ways that you can do it is, um, you know, giving them directions. I know sometimes that might be a little bit difficult if the person has memory issues, but either whether you write them down, whether you say one at a time, or you use pictures, or you use a, you know, whatever aids you use to remind the person to brush your teeth, um, you know the person best. Modeling, right? Sometimes we, we just say, okay, well, it's time to brush your teeth. I'll see you, I'll be back. And the person's like, what do I do now? I don't know what that is. Right, so maybe modeling here, I'm going to do mine, here's yours, ready? Okay, let's go, two minutes, right? Um, that might also make it part of an interactive activity with you and that person. Oops. Seating, we don't think about this. How, how do you brush your teeth? Sitting or standing? Standing, right? But a person that's a uh, fall risk, a person that has mobility issues, a person that has balance issues, Standing over a sink is probably not the best idea. So get a seat. Maybe have a chair available. This is where you can say, hey, Susie, can you please bring me the chair? Because Dad's going to brush his teeth while I'm holding him here. Um, so to consider maybe, and it doesn't have to be in the bathroom. It could be someplace else. You can just give them a cup of water and they can spit in a bowl or, or something like that. Um, so again, maintaining that routine. You're in the bathroom, you might as well do it there. Especially if it's nighttime, perfect, let's do it. We're already here. 
uh, regular visits to the dentist, of course. Even if the person has dentures, even if the person doesn't, you know, non piece of meat, it's still important to go to the dentist for all of us as well. Okay, any questions on bath time? Anything you want to share? Has it been helpful? Okay. Step in shower with stuff maybe that high. Okay. And I have two grab bars on the inside of the shower on either side of the door. Uh huh. So when he goes to get out, he's holding on to the one side and then trying to find something to hold on with yet. So I'm wondering if they should do one on the outside. I'm glad that you brought up the question. And so she was saying, you know, is maybe I need to put another grab bar on the outside of the of the shower. This is what I suggest that you do as caregivers. You, you kind of become detectives, you know, for what the person needs. Because the person might, that you're caring for might not say, oh, I think I need a grab bar right here. They're not going to say that, right? So then maybe what you need to do is you really need to take inventory. Your homework is to go home, especially in the shower that the, the, the people that you're caring for are using, and just put yourselves in their shoes. If I'm going to get in the shower, and I use this grab bar to get in, I know he needs something else. Maybe here is where I should put another one. Um, you know, this is too high. Maybe we need to uh, build some sort of a step or put some sort of a step stool that can help uh, with a grab bar, you know, on the side. And they sell those as well. Um, so you really need to just take inventory and assess your bathroom. That could easily be done. You can put it on the, on the outside. The outside is easier than to put it on the inside. Usually the inside has tile, right? So you have to drill through the tile. Uh, sometimes people have that, uh, um, uh, that acrylic uh, inserts, and so that could also, you might need it professionally installed. Uh, but there are ways to, to do that. But I would consider that if that would help him, Inside and out, I had inside and out for my aunt. Yeah. And that is not going to be helpful. Uh. Yeah. And, and, and I remember, and, and maybe it's, it's important to show the story, I had, uh, so if you think about it, uh, so the, our shower was like this, and so she would step in, and inside was a grab bar, and I think it was like this. Um, the reason why I put one outside is because I had a towel, uh, towel rack and, or a rod, and the towel would hang, like most of us have. But I noticed that whenever she would come in or out, she would hold on to the towel. She would just kind of hold on to it because she just needed that little extra, I don't know, st stabilization to get in and out. And I thought, there's no way. She's going to bring that whole thing. That's not, she's going to fall. So I had to get rid of that temptation of holding on to that uh, false sense of security. And I installed the grab bar outside and inside. And that way she knew the only thing that was available were those two grab bars, nothing else. So the, I think it's also coming to the realization that you're going to have to, it, your bathroom is not going to be the ideal decorated space. Um, you know, it's, it, it, things might be off. And that's okay. It's about the security and the safety of the person that you're caring for. Anything else you want to share? Our, our friends over online? Nothing? Okay. So I do want to talk about um, our resources because if you have, how many of you are connected to our services? Okay. So then let me talk to you about our resources because I think they would be beneficial for you and again, the people that you, uh, you associate with who might be in the same situation. So we are a nonprofit organization. We focus 100% on the family caregiver. All of our services are free. Okay. Our primary goal is to help you because in helping you, you're able to help the person that you're caring for. And so if you call us and you say, you know, I'm caring for my dad and, and I don't know what to do. I'm really overwhelmed. He won't shower. Uh, you know, he forgets my name. Um, we, we will assess your situation, figure out what it, what it is that you need, and putting you in contact with one of our care 
managers who are licensed clinical social workers or master's level clinicians and will work with you one-on-one -on -one the whole time that you want them to. Usually it's during your whole caregiver journey. Um, we have specialized information so if you wanted to more learn more about successful bath time for example we have a library upstairs and you can check out the books and the videos on successful bath time if you wanted to know more. Uh, and I'd be happy our staff can take you upstairs you know, to our lobby so you can see those. Uh, we have short-term counseling. So a lot of times our family caregivers are like, I just don't know what to do. I'm really frustrated. It's too overwhelming. I don't have anyone to talk to. My adult kids don't want to listen because they just don't get it. Whatever it is, we are here for you. And so we can give you uh, free counseling sessions with our licensed clinical social workers. Um, sometimes our caregivers have legal and financial issues and questions. And, you know, do I sell all of our assets so we can place, you know, mom in a home? Or what do I do here? How much do I need to save? So those are all questions that can be uh, uh, post to our legal uh, team, which are really uh, attorneys that we partner with that are elder law attorneys, and we'll pay for that first session for you. Uh, respite care, who doesn't need a break? Especially if you're a caregiver, right? We could always use a break. Um, so for our clients, we have a, a budget that's available to help care for your needs. So if you want to come to a class and you're saying, well, I can't leave mom at home because she has dementia, what am I going to do? We'll take care of that. I have to go to um, you know, a wedding at a state. What am I going to do? I can't leave dad by himself. We will help you with that. Okay? And it's part of the reason why uh, you know, the county of San Diego recognizes the work that we do, and this is why we get the, the budget from the county to provide these services free of charge to you, as well as other donors and other ways that people have donated and given to SCRC because we want to make sure that you have those resources available. We have support groups and I think you have a list of all those support groups so feel free to check them out, visit, you'll, you'll expand your network of care. Yeah? I just have a question about the support groups. Yep. I've been wanting to go however the time that you guys have are only in the afternoon. Do you guys have anything in the we can, we just talk to us afterwards because I know sometimes there are changing times and locations and maybe there's something in the works. Uh, it's usually based on the, the, the participation and the need in a certain community. So if there are enough people that are interested in a different time frame or a different location, then that we can open a support group as long as we have availability, but yes. Education and training is what I do. So um, I think Guadalupe gave you a flyer uh, it's one has a list of a lot of classes and those are classes that are uh, coming up in 2019 and those are the same thing live stream classes um, you know if if you want to visit the website to know more about the different topics that we're going to be covering this is actually the schedule for January through June and so we're going to talk about different things. If people, as you're talking to your friends and your family members and they're interested in a topic, have them come over and, you know, they can, they're welcome. Um, we also have another workshop that's coming up that you might be interested in, especially we talked about a lot of uh, these issues here, is uh, a mobility assistance and safety tools. So we actually, it's going to be here, <coughs> and we're actually going to bring in a bed and I think a commode and a wheelchair. We're gonna show, yeah, we're gonna show people how to how to utilize those without getting hurt and what is available for you uh, to help that person you're caring for. So if you're interested, please see Lupe because space is limited. We are gonna be having it here, and with all those uh, with that equipment, we're not able to have that many people here. So if you are, if you want to come, if you want to. Uh, be here for this workshop. Make sure you give Lupe your contact info so we can reserve your space. Okay, and we also have an upcoming conference on March in March uh, 8th, and it's for our military and veteran families 
who are caring for someone with either a traumatic brain injury or post-traumatic stress disorder or some sort of a physical disability. So we, we put these conferences. You're all welcome uh, to attend, and, but especially if you fall under that category for the military and veteran families, then for sure uh, you might be interested in, in coming. We're always open to going to employers and bringing our classes and our, and our resources because we recognize that caregivers are also working full time as well as caregiving full time. So if you know of a company that's interested in us come, to come and, um, and do this and partner with them, let us know. Um, that way their employees have that resource available to them as well. Um, and then Reach to Caregivers is a program of ours that is specifically for someone who's caring with Alzheimer's, uh, memory loss, or dementia. It's a wonderful program that is uh, really the idea is that when you're coming in, by the time that you leave, your depression levels, your understanding, your management of these behaviors is increased. Um, that, that you have the empowered, uh, that you're empowered to really become a better caregiver through this series of classes. So if that is something that is interesting, and again, it's free, then see si Rosario, she can tell you a little bit more about that class um, because it's really wonderful. It's, 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 th what you will learn is just so valuable as a caregiver. And of course, I talked about OFC. So here's our contact info. I mean, you're here today, so you're already connected. Uh, at least you took the first step. But if before you leave today, you want to know more about our programs or you want to go upstairs to the library, let us know. We're here for you. Uh, any other questions uh, online? Anything? OK, well, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next, next month. Thank you. <coughs>